Uh, and then some other comments, and then we'll get to uh, quite possibly uh, the most fun thing uh, that I'll do today, uh, along with uh, our judges uh, participate in uh, Valentine's Day ceremonies. Um, as you can see, uh, today is sunny with highs near 40. We're hoping that this will result, of course, in some additional melting and help facilitate our plowing operations to get all of our city's roads and streets clear. There's a good chance, though, that we'll get a little bit more snow tonight uh, or overnight, but forecasts uh, are predicting just uh, what the uh, weather folks call a mere dusting. There's also a chance that there will be snow and a rain shower on Saturday. And that, rec uh, that combination could result in one to three inches of accumulation. Officially, Philadelphia International Airport received 11.5 total inches during this snow event. For the entire season, we have now received 54.8 inches of snow, making this, in fact, the fifth most snowiest uh, season in Philadelphia so far. As I said yesterday, this season also has broken a 130-year-old record in Philadelphia for having the most six-inch-plus snowstorms in one season. We've had four so far this year. For comparison, uh, at the time uh, that this last happened, Chester A. Arthur was president of the United States of America. I'm sure all of the great history buffs in the room uh, remember uh, President uh, Chester A. Arthur. In terms of city operations, uh, city offices, courts, public and parochial schools, as you well know by now, are closed today. The Philadelphia School District Administrative Office opened at 10 a.m. this morning. The Emergency Operations Center was deactivated at 9 a.m. this morning. We are still under the declared snow emergency from a day or so ago. Let me repeat, we are still under the declared snow emergency from Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We are still under a snow emergency here in Philadelphia. The snow emergency will be lifted at 2 p.m. today. That means still you cannot park your car on a snow emergency route until after 2 p.m. today. If you park there before 2 p.m. today, your car will be ticketed, it will be towed, and in accordance with a Friday policy, it may in fact be crushed. Uh, and so uh, you do not want to park your car on a snow emergency route before 2 p.m. today. 363 vehicles were relocated off of snow emergency routes during this winter snow event. To find a relocated vehicle, if you are fortunate enough, you should call 215-686-SNOW. That also translates into 7669. Do not call 911. 911, as you know, is only for life and death emergencies, not for finding your car that you should not have parked on a snow emergency route in the first place. This number will remain active throughout the course of this weekend. Let me give you some additional information about the snow emergency. At the height of the storm, the streets department had 427 vehicles plowing uh, out in our streets and more than 700 employees working. Plowing and salting operations will continue throughout the course of today and most likely into the weekend until every street has been treated. That is our goal. Trash and recycling collections for today and yesterday, as you know, were suspended. Residents with Thursday and Friday normal trash collection days should place their trash out on their normal day next week. Not on your driveway or alleyways. Everyone should place curbside next week. We will not collect trash from alleys or driveways. If that's your normal place, we will not do that next week. We're asking you to put it out on the front, on curbside, it would make it much easier for our crews to pick up that material. Monday trash, uh, which normally uh, would not be picked up because of the holiday, we are picking up normal Monday trash collection this Monday, even though it is a holiday. We want to stay on our regular schedule, and that's why we're picking up trash this Monday. PennDOT is still restricting the speed limit on, to 45 miles an hour on state highways. All Delaware River Port Authority bridges have reduced speeds to 35 miles an hour. PICO reports 32 outages still in the city of Philadelphia. Philadelphia International Airport currently has uh, all four run runways open, and most carriers are running either full or nearly full schedules today, but there are still some delays and cancellations. 
Before you go out to the airport, ticket holders, we are urging you still to contact your carrier or to call 1-800-PHLGATE, or you can check the website www.phl.org for more current flight information. Lastly, the 311 call center is still open for snow-related information or to report a downed tree or plowing a service request, please call 311. 311 received more than 3,400 calls yesterday. We received reports of 12 downed trees due to the storm and seven downed wires in the city. Property owners must clear a three-foot wide path on their sidewalks within six hours of the end of the storm. In case you haven't noticed, the storm is over, and so we are now uh, in uh, that period. Please, seriously, check on elderly, sick, or shut-in neighbors. Uh, they need your help and assistance now more than ever. Young people, do yourselves a favor. You'll feel good about it, and you may actually make some extra money. Get a shovel. Help a senior citizen. Do not charge them, but charge other people uh, to plow snow or lift snow from uh, their uh, sidewalks or from their steps. But help a senior citizen today. You're out of school. Do something good for somebody else. Do not shovel snow back out into the street. You will be fined. It is against the law, and as I said over the past couple of days, it is absolutely completely disrespectful to the hardworking forces out there who are coming through these streets, trying to get the snow out of the roadway, and then folks throw snow back in the street. Again, do not do that. The streets department is monitoring. We've already fined some folks, and we will find you as well. Please clear fire hydrants, storm drains, and sidewalk corner uh, curb cuts if you live near a corner. The water department, the water department has 42 crews out right now cleaning inlets and paths for drainage today. Again, with temperatures up at about 40 degrees, with more salt on the roadway, we're going to see the melting. The melting, of course, uh, turns into liquid. The liquid has to go somewhere. We want it to go into our storm drains. If they are clogged, it will just create more problems out on the street. Code blue designation is still in effect. To report a homeless person or someone else out on the streets in need, please contact the Project Home uh, Outreach Hotline, 215-232-1984. Now, let me have uh, SEPTA come up and give an update on their service and their operations, and then I have some additional information uh, to share with you in a few minutes. SEPTA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Jeff Knepple, Deputy General Manager for SEPTA, and thankfully, I'll be brief. Um, our bus system right now, currently out of the 124 routes that we operate, only eight are suspended. Some 50 of the routes are on winter-related detours and will continue to work with municipalities and the cities to open up these last few bus routes. Our regional rail line is still operating with delays and some annulments due to weather conditions, but that will hopefully get better as well as the day goes on. Both, so both our bus and our regional rail are coming back together uh, off to a pretty good start, but will get stronger. Um, for information on, on uh, up-to-date, you can go to our website, SEPTA.org, or call on our customer service line at 215-580-7800. Thank you. David Perry, Streets Commissioner. We're I'm here to report on two operations that we're running concurrently. The travel lanes on our primary streets are generally down the blacktop with some slush. They were plowed and sold again after last night's three inch snowfall. Be aware, however, of hard pack on some streets and be aware tonight of black ice, which is likely to occur once temperatures again fall below freezing. Sure. Hard pack is um, a combination of snow, sleet, freezing rain, which when it falls on colder uh, city streets, it, it turns into a, an icing condition. Uh, we still have that in patches on some of the city streets. Just be aware of it. Be careful when you're driving tonight. Black ice is a condition that occurs when the snow melts. It becomes like a puddle of water, and then with rapid freezing overnight, it, it freezes solid. So black ice just looks like plain roadway, but it's just as dangerous as any other type of icing condition. We have uh, construction equipment helping to clear the crossovers and turning lanes on the Roosevelt Boulevard. They're also plowing snow elsewhere in the city. 
Use extra caution if you see these vehicles and keep a safe distance away from those operations. You can see them better than they can see you. Concerning our residential network, which is our second operation, approximately two thirds of the residential streets were plowed and treated yesterday prior to the second round of snow coming in. Today, we will work on the remaining streets on that network that were not addressed yesterday. Much of today's work will involve the use of construction equipment due to the difficulties of working on narrow residential streets. Remember, our service standards for the residential streets is to make them passable. In many cases, especially on east-west streets that remain in the shade, it's not possible to take them down the blacktop. But our goal, our commitment, is to treat all residential streets in the city of Philadelphia. Again, some quick reminders. Do not park within 20 feet of a corner uh, of an intersection. We need that extra room for the plows to get by. Park as close to the curb as possible, also to allow our, our plowing operations to proceed. And it also allows on bus routes for the buses to get through. As the mayor said, do not plow, shovel, or throw snow into the travel lanes of the city streets. Uh, with that, be safe driving today, and happy Valentine's Day. Hi, Sam Phillips, Director of Emergency Management. As the mayor mentioned, we deactivated the city's emergency operations center at 9 a.m. this morning. We had a relatively quiet overnight, just a handful of small um, incidents down trees, few building issues, some power lines, but all in all, things are looking very good. So we've now transitioned back to our normal 24-7 watch desk. Um, call 311 uh, if you are a member of the public and have any questions or need to connect with services. Continue to shovel and uh, clear out your, the front of your homes. And uh, again, don't throw snow back into the streets and let the streets department continue to do their great work. Thanks. Thanks, Dave St. Sam. And, uh, and of course, uh, SEPTA, our great uh, partner. Before I open to questions, uh, just a few other comments on uh, some other matters, and then we're going to get to um, Q&A and uh, some other uh, activities here uh, in the reception room. First, of course, uh, you'll recall that when we woke up uh, to yesterday's blizzard, uh, we also learned at the same time of the Comcast Corporation's latest move uh, onto the national and international stage, namely the proposed purchase of Time Warner Cable for about $45 billion. Comcast has emerged as a true media and innovation giant, and such an acquisition, when hopefully when approved by various regulatory bodies, will provide millions more consumers with increased content and viewing opportunities. And it should be noted that as Comcast's name and brand reaches across our nation, it also enhances Philadelphia's reputation and prominence as a technology and innovation leader. I want to commend Ralph and Brian Roberts, David L. Cohen, and the entire Comcast team on this effort. They deserve tremendous congratulations and the city's appreciation for pushing this great corporate citizen further into areas of technology and communication, while also enhancing enjoyment in our city and across America. The new Comcast Innovation and Technology Center, which will soar more than 1,100 feet above our growing city, represents a $1.2 billion investment in Philadelphia and is and will continue to be an emblem and testament to what a smart entrepreneurial team can do to advance a city, a state, on behalf of millions of consumers. On another note, uh, we have a number uh, today of beautifully attired visitors to City Hall. I'm sure you can guess their intent. Today is, in fact, Valentine's Day. So one, happy Valentine's Day to everyone here. And I'm sure by the end of the day, it will be an even happier Valentine's Day. When you're celebrating the idea of love, there's no better place to do it than in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. As many of you know, there is, in fact, a great tradition of our uh, many judges and, on occasion, mayors acting in an official capacity to marry couples on Valentine's Day. It might be a little slushy and wet outside, but, folks, I can assure you, there is nothing that can stop a bride and a groom from walking down the aisle, especially a bride. And so, please, uh, can we recognize the many couples who have decided to spend their lives together and have committed to be as one in the state of marriage. A big round of applause for them.
Finally, uh, let me go back for one moment to all the weather and its impact on our city. You may have seen the various media reports suggesting that our restaurants and other hospitality venues have had a fairly bruising week owing to the bad weather. A couple closed days here at City Hall, schools out, a number of other businesses uh, closing has had an impact certainly on our hospitality uh, industry. Well, we've had an army of streets department employees out working around the clock through some of the worst possible conditions. And again, I want to commend our snow warriors, all of our public employees who have fought this storm and all the other storms this season and for the last uh, few years. Our streets are overall in great shape. And by the end of the day, with sun and warmer temperatures and a uh, little extra salt, uh, I think we'll be ready uh, for a great Friday night in Philadelphia. And so everyone uh, in the city and throughout the region, we are open for business this evening. Come on out and support our restaurants, our bars, and our hospitality sector. Have a good time. Uh, whoever he or she may be, take your honey out tonight. I'm sure the restaurants will be able to book you uh, with a good slot. Unfortunately, they've had some cancellations, and so you might get lucky and pick up one. As I mentioned earlier, there might be a little bit of slush out there on the roads, uh, but there's the heat of Valentine's Day will make, uh, in some instances, could make for a pretty hot night uh, in Philadelphia. And so come on out, have a good time. Uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, for the earlier presser, let me take a few questions from the news media, and then we need to get some folks married. Mike. No, in fact, we will be working throughout the weekend. Today's goal is to get to those residential streets that we couldn't get to yesterday, but we will be working on problem areas. We'll be going back, touching up some of those streets from yesterday, uh, tomorrow, and we will be working throughout the weekend. And you had mentioned uh, earlier in the week, and you alluded to it in your comments, that particularly in some of the smaller streets, like in South Philadelphia, people not parking close enough to the curb. Does that remain a problem today as, as your trucks are out there? Yeah, we still have that issue. We bought in a different equipment to try to navigate those streets, but it would be preferable if folks stay 20 feet off of the intersections and park as close to the curb as possible. That allows us to get through as quickly as we can. Dave, just to follow up on that, is there a particular area of the city that you still have to tackle that you have to watch for? Yeah, the, the remaining streets that we need to do are scattered throughout the city. We uh, run six districts that have different parts of the city, and they all run concurrently, and each of the districts has a few remaining residential streets that they need to uh, address today. Mayor, uh, do you have any idea how many people have been fined for throwing uh, uh, snow into the streets, and do you know what the fine is? I can answer the second question. The fine is $100, uh, which, uh, in my opinion, at least should be higher uh, for engaging in that kind of behavior. We can get you some numbers on how many folks uh, have uh, been fined. Obviously, in the choice between uh, plowing streets and, and dealing with uh, folks, I mean, you have, you, know, you have to kind of catch folks in the act. Um, it's pretty obvious in some instances you know, what has happened. You can look at a pretty clear street, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's one a little patch of, of snow that's been thrown in the streets. But, you know, you have to catch folks doing it. Our people are out there primarily trying to plow streets, not uh, catch folks who can't figure out uh, where else to put the snow other than right in the street where the plows have just uh, come through. But there have been some people fined, uh, and uh, we can get you some numbers later. But the fine is $100 and uh, probably should be higher. Mike. No, no, I don't think it called. This storm doesn't call for that, and, and we should be okay through the next one, too, the one that's tomorrow. Anything else? Fantastic. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I've uh, put together a uh, very special Valentine's Day playlist uh, for our activities. Uh, this is personally crafted. Uh, and curated uh, by me, uh, and uh, we're going to have a really good time uh, here this afternoon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.